Fox Sports welcomes you to U.S. Cellular Field. It's the second of a three-game interleague series between the Chicago Cubs and the Chicago White Sox. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to a special primetime edition of Fox Saturday Baseball. Kenny Albert, along with Mark Grace. Well, the hottest team in baseball plays right here on the south side of Chicago. The White Sox have won 10 consecutive games and 14 of their last 15. Yeah, just two short weeks ago, the White Sox were toiling nine and a half games out of first place. Now they find themselves a game and a half out. Two weeks ago, Ozzie Guillen was rumored to be in replace. Now he's once again the toast of the south side. Well, the White Sox won the series opener yesterday by a 6 nothing score. A lot to talk about on the Cubs side, including the indefinite suspension of Carlos Zambrano. Never a dull moment where the White Sox and Cubs get together. It's next on Fox. Their batting order brought to you by Taco Bell Fink outside the barn. Kosuke Fukudome leads off, followed by Marlon Bird. Then the DH, Derek Lee, Xavier Nady in the cleanup spot. Aramis Ramirez bats fifth. Then Alfonso Soriano, Starlin Castro, Giovanni Soto, and Ryan Terrio. The batting order for the Cubs. Today's game brought to you by Budweiser, official beer of the first inning. The beer that starts with full flavor and ends with a crisp, clean finish. Budweiser. It's what we do as Kosuke Fukudome steps in against the 33-year-old right-hander Freddie Garcia, who has won his last five starts. And Fukudome fouls it off to the right side. Nothing in one. Garcia in 13 starts with a record of 8-3 and three and an earned run average of 4.85. Mark the sprint picture profile for Freddie Garcia. Well, as he's gotten older, he's out. He's out with the power and he's in with the finesse. Used to be one of the harder throwers in the game. And now he's gone to more throwing some off speed pitches, hitting the corners. Can't just throw fastballs by people like he used to be able to. And he's also exceeded expectations, Kenny. Who would have thought a number five starter? Because that was tapped to first base. Anarco with the foot. Garcia covering one away. But who would have thought a number five starter coming into this season? 
could already have eight victories for you. So he certainly exceeded those expectations. And those eight wins, Mark, have come during the May's or the months of May and June. Did not win a game in April. That's exactly right. He's winner of five straight starts. And he is one hot White Sox. White Sox manager Ozzy Gain, his club has won 10 in a row. 14 of their last 15 of the White Sox during interleague play are 14 and 2. Here's Marlon Bird. And Bird, the second leading hitter in the National League, takes a call strike from Freddie Garcia. Nothing in one. 0 for 4 in yesterday's game, batting 319 this season. Trailing only Martin Prado of the Atlanta Braves. Been a very good pickup for the Cubs. Had a big year last year for the Texas Rangers. He came on over when Rudy Jaramillo came over as well. That's the hitting coach for the Cubs. One of the best in the game. Right center. Quentin makes the catch for out number two. As we check out the White Sox defensively brought to you by Scott's. The air in left, Rios in center, Quentin in right. Anarco at first base, Beckham at second, Ramirez at short, Vizquel at third, and the battery of Garcia and Castro. With two outs here in the top of the first inning, here's Derek Lee. And he falls behind, nothing in one. Strike one after strike one, that's how you have eight wins in late June. Just continue to pound the strike zone and get ahead. In case you missed it yesterday, and I don't think there's anybody in the city that did not see did it. something happen here yesterday that we didn't hear about? Something involving Derek Lee and Cubs starting pitcher Carlos Zambrano. And excuse me, check swing. It's Canerco to Garcia. An easy nine pitch. One, two, three first for eight game winner Freddie Garcia. Since May of 1976, Sox with a record of 38 and 34. Their batting order brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the pond. Juan Pierre will lead off, the former Cub, followed by 43 year old Omar Vizquel. Alex Rios hits third. Paul Canerco in the cleanup spot. Then Carlos Quentin, Mark Katze, the DH, Alexei Ramirez, Ramon Castro, and Gordon Beckham as the White Sox get set to face 31 year old right hander Carlos Silva, like Freddie Garcia. An eight game winner so far this season, and Silva's picture profile is brought to you by Sprint. Well, Carlos Silva has been fabulous as a Chicago Cub, and what a turnaround. He was just having a miserable time up in Seattle. But he came back over to the National League's doing some good things, and now with Carlos Zambrano suspended indefinitely. Who is the ace of this Cubs staff? My vote, Carlos Silva. The Cubs are 10 and 3 in Silva's 13 starts. He won only five games the last two seasons combined with Seattle. And gets set to face Juan Pierre, Omar Vizquel, and Alex Rios. 
here in the bottom of the first inning. As Pierre takes ball one. You'll see a good moving fastball from Silva as well as a change up and a breaking ball. Pierre looking to punt his way on. Now one and one. Juan Pierre, a guy that Carlos Silva has to really pay the most attention to. He's a guy, if he gets on base, he scores. That's the kind of speed he has. And he can just wreak havoc when he gets on base. On one hop, nice play by Xavier Nady. Takes it to the bag to retire Juan Pierre. Usually you see Derek Lee out there at first base, but he's the DH today. Xavier Nady, a outfielder by, by Dre, but he made a nice play on that sharp ground ball off the bat of Juan Pierre. And one of the plays in question in Zambrano's mind in the first inning yesterday. The ball hit down the line by Pierre, which went right. for a leadoff double. That in that situation when Pierre hitting first baseman has to be close and up on the grass. The ball went right over the bag. There's not a first baseman alive that could have made the play. But yet Zambrano was not happy. And the, the thing that's dis disappointing about Zambrano in that situation is that man, Derek Lee, he's a gold glove first baseman. He has probably, because that one's lifted foul, that'll go into the seats. But you see the plays there. He's a little upset about things. Yeah, a little upset about things. Okay. Here we go. Well, later on, he confronted Derek Lee in the dugout. And Derek Lee, I think, over the course of those two, two guys being teammates, and that is Zambrano Lee, has probably saved Carlos Zambrano at least 200 runs with his glove. Terrio over to Beatty. To retire the scale, now two away. Defensively for the Cubs tonight, brought to you by Scotts. In the outfield, Soriano, Bird, and Fukudome. Nady at first with Lee to DH. Dario at second. Castro at short. Ramirez at third. And Giovanni Soto behind the plate. Alex Rio steps in for the White Sox. And you mentioned Mark Lee, a three time Gold Glove Award exactly. winner. And as you alluded to, Lou Pinello told us that Lee was pinching with Pierre at bat in the first inning in case of a bunt. And Juan Pierre is, is not a pull hitter. He's a guy that slaps the ball up the middle the other way. Well, he got something off speed. So you're going to be playing him off the line. You're going to be playing him close to the plate, playing him shallow. And he just happened to, to hit one over the bag that Lee had no chance on. And like I said, Carlos zambrano has got to realize just how valuable a defender that Derek Lee is. How quickly you forget when you give up four runs in an inning. the four runs allowed in the first inning by Zambrano with three run home run off the bat of Carlos Quentin. On, on, an, two. on an 0 2 pitch. Yep. So the missing away now 2 and 2. Maybe Derek Lee should have gotten his face about making that pitch. Hopefully every, everything will work out. Lou Pinella was certainly not happy with the way things were going. That's a beautiful inning there from Silva. So Rios down on strikes. Garcia retired the Cubs in order, and now Silva does the same to the White Sox on 12 pitches.
outside the fun by the all-new 2011 Super Duty built for tough and by Sprint, the Dow Network. Kenny Albert, Mark Grace back in Chicago. Both sides retired in order in the first, and now Xavier Nady will lead off against Freddie Garcia here in the top of the second inning. White Sox won yesterday's game 6 0. Cubs, Mark, have now been shut out in three of their last six games. Yeah, Lou Pinella begging for some hits and some hits with runners in scoring position. It just hasn't happened. Now, to their defense, they have run into some awfully good pitching of late, especially up in Seattle. King Felix, Felix Hernandez, Cliff Lee, then Jake Peavy last yesterday afternoon was dominant. He's starting to throw the ball like Jake Peavy again. Silva was supposed to pitch, scheduled to pitch against his former team. Would have been matched up against Felix Hernandez in Seattle earlier this week, but due to back tightness, Silva's start was pushed back a couple of days. Ironic in that Carlos Zambrano was today's scheduled starter. There's Jake Peavy of the White Sox dug out, so had Silva's back not tightened up. We might not have that doesn't happen yesterday involving Zambrano and Lee. Interesting how things like that work out. You kind of do the right. You, well, you not kind of. You do the right thing by taking that spot, taking the baseball. But unfortunately, the temper got the best of him in a four-run first, and he was sent home and not invited back. Leading off for the Cubs here in the second with Ramos Ramirez waiting on deck. Payoff pitch from Garcia on the ground to the second baseman Beckham. And Nady is retired. Time now for our four keys to today's game. Well, the Chicago Cubs, well, they've got to swing the bats. They've got to do a better job of scoring some runs. And forget about Z. Not only, not only forget about what happened yesterday, but you're going to have to forget about him. In the future as well. So you got to forget about Z's past, which was yesterday, and you got to forget about him for the future for a while. He is suspended indefinitely. He's not going to be around for a while. Comes playing with a 24 man roster. Ball one to Aramis Ramirez, who returned from the disabled list yesterday on his 32nd birthday. And then also, we talked about the Sox. They're having a June surge around here in Chicago. There's something very famous as that one's swatted foul. There's, something, there's a big famous saying around here on really on both sides of town, the north side for the Cubs, south side for the White Sox, and that is there's a term called the June swoon. And a lot of famous teams, well, they, they start to fall in, they start to fall fast in the standings in June. Well, not the White Sox. The White Sox are surging and they're nearing first place here in June. I'll tell you what, it's got a lot of people's attention here on the south side of Chicago. Ozzy's done a great job of turning this team around. Well, it's a confident bunch when you're around them, too. There's Jake Peavy, who won yesterday's game. 21 consecutive scoreless innings for Peavy. Pierre moving to his right. And he makes the catch to retire Ramirez. Time for a direct TV game break. We head to Los Angeles. Chris Rose and Kevin Millar, guys. So the Yankees off to a good start in the first inning after winning last night's game. Got an Alex Rodriguez home run. They just continue to pound the baseball. They continue to pound the National League. Former Yankee Alfonso Soriano at the plate. Tied for the team lead in both home runs and runs batted in. Yeah, when 35 RBIs is your team leader, that's, that's a low number. Side with Marlon Byrd with those 35 runs batted in.
Garcia has retired the first five Cubs he has faced tonight. He's 4 0 lifetime and five starts against the Cubs. Missing low and away, now 2 and 2. As we get into evening here, it's still plenty hot at U.S. Cellular. You can see Freddie working up a big ladder. Base hit into left field, first hit of the game. Soriano on his way to second. No throw from Pierre, a stand up double. It looked like Pierre had a little bit of difficulty with this base hit. I don't know if Soriano was going to be going all the way, but he a slight bobble, and that's all it takes for Soriano to get into second base. It'll be interesting to see if they call that a single or an error or just a straight double. So the Cubs with a two out base runner. As the 20 year old shortstop Starlin Castro steps in. Castro started 43 consecutive days. Before getting the last two games off. Batting 255 for the season. Well, Pierre was charged with an error, his first of the season. So it goes in the books as a single and an E7. It kind of looked to me like Soriano was plenty happy with a single. And then once he saw the bobble, and it's good heads up base running by Soriano, he never stopped. But he just kept going once that happened. On the ground to the shortstop, Ramirez fires across, and that will do it for the Cubs. In the second, Soriano is stranded. When we come back, a visit from one of the greatest players in White Sox history, the Big Hurt, when we return to Chicago. Chevrolet is sponsored by Budweiser with full flavor and a crisp, clean finish. It's what we do. Back in Chicago, bottom of the second inning with the Cubs and White Sox scoreless. Middle of the order for the White Sox against Carlos Silva with Paul Canerco leading off. As we welcome into the booth one of the great all time White Sox. And the only man with more home runs in a White Sox uniform than Paul Canerco. 
Frank Thomas is with us, five-time All-Star. Thanks for joining us, Frank. Thanks, guys, for having me. How you doing, Biggin? I'm doing great, man. It's been a great summer, hanging out in the ballpark. Uh, didn't realize what retirement life would be like. And you're involved in some television work as well, so you get to follow the I'm, White Sox on a day-to-day -day basis. I've been watching this every day. Um, you know, 15 days ago, we were uh, talking about the trades we might have to make. Uh, 15 days later, we go 14 out of 15 games, and now we're talking about adding players. Isn't it amazing? How quickly it can turn around. Them. The Sox always had pitching this year, but they really struggled with the bats. And have you noticed? Is that is that mainly the the biggest change? The guys are starting to swing the bats. Well, they, they changed everything. They took away most of the power. You know, they took out Jermaine Dye and uh, Jim Tomey, but right. they put uh, added guys who were just contact hitters that didn't work at first. But now everybody seemed to hit their groove, and uh, you know, a lot of big two out hits. They've been like, you know, getting 10, 12 hits a game, and the pitching staff have been totally dominant. So. Uh, this has been a special season so far to this point. Look at White Sox general manager Kenny Williams as Carlos Quentin fouls it off. Quentin with a home run in each of the last three games. He certainly picked up the pace. Carlos is talented. I, I had him out with the Arizona Diamondbacks, but he's a bit of a mystery to me. What do you think, Frank? He's a, he's a dangerous man. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that right now. He has that presence. And when he gets hot, he can carry a ball club. And, you know, this week I've seen him at a slide over the right field line drive wall, change up. 20 rows back, mm -hmm. fastball, straight center field, home run. I mean, the guy's dangerous. He's definitely a presence. He's got unlimited power. Frank, you played in 33 of these games, the Windy City rivalry. How much fun was it to play against the Cubs? It was a lot of fun. You couldn't get up for these games, you couldn't get up at all because, you know, this city really treats this as a, uh, I guess, a prelude to the World Series here because, uh, you know, they really get after each other. Gracie can tell you. Uh, and, and these series that I played in, uh, I was. In the 13 years with the Cubs, I was in the playoffs twice in 89 and 98. Well, well, really, uh, 89, there was no interleague play at the time. So, so for 12 of my 13 years, this was my World Series. This was, uh, it was sellouts and whatnot. It looked like Carlos Clinton just got hit by a pitch, I guess. That's well, what we'll he was hit on the hand, and Luis Fidel does not agree. That happens quite a bit. He's always getting hit. Ninth time this season, Frank. <laughs> What do you think? Well, they're saying, he, I'm sure Lewis saying he swung at it. Believe me, Carlos didn't want to go to first base. Bill Hall on the home plate umpire tonight. This place is rocking. <laughs> You know, they really stopped, you know, the night games of this series. You remember years back, oh, all yeah. the fights and all the rest and everything else. <laughs> they, they stopped this night night series thing. And, and as, yeah, they were there for a while, Kenny and folks at home. Wrigley Field and U.S. Cellular Field, it was just filled with haymakers <laughs> during this series. It, it was a great rivalry, though, wasn't it, Frank? Well, coming upstairs uh, to meet you guys, they already arrested three or four people already. <laughs> <Is it really? laughs> we're talking, talking to the bottom of the second inning, and we got four or five arrests already. Well, Bill Hahn's call stands, and Carlos Quinton is a one-out base runner. Mark Kotze at the plate. Kotze, the White Sox designated hitter tonight. And Silva throws over to first. Frank, the All-Star game coming up on Fox in a couple of weeks, and you represented the White Sox in the Midsummer Classic five times. In fact, you were the first White Sox to hit a home run. In an all-star game back in 1995, and that brings a smile to your face. What do you remember about that night? Good times, good times. The world's watching, and you hit a home run in an all-star game. There's no better feeling. What city was that in? Texas. Texas. Well, John Smiley. Oh, yeah, I remember. Very proud that night. Quentin goes, and Katze fouls it off. Fouls again. Pressing the acceler accelerator a little bit there, playing hit and run with Katze. Clinton was on the move, and that's he's struggled a bit this year. 216 for him. He's a much better hitter than that. So a lot of times when a guy's struggling, go ahead and maybe force it a little bit with him, put on a hit and run. Well, I've watched him all year long. Uh, he's hit a lot of balls that were caught, a lot of line drives, a lot of balls that were worn in track, but he really, you know, struck him well. Uh, he's, he's put the bat on the ball all season long. So, you know, that 216, it's not really reflecting what he's been doing. It could easily long. be better. Oh, yeah, much better. One and two on Kopse with one out. Quentin the runner on first. Bottom of the second inning with no score. Now 
two and two. What are, you, what are some of your favorite memories here, Frank? Just watching the park the way it is right now, just filled. I, I was blessed to play on a lot of winning teams. Yes, you did. Um, you know, played with a lot of exciting managers, had a lot of great teammates. Um, you know, I just, it's always known to come back here, and I'm just happy to be still be a part of this organization. Sure. Well, you, you were one of the main reasons why you guys were, you were on so many great teams. Who's your favorite manager you played for? Uh, it's got to be Ozzy, you know, because Ozzy kept it fun. You oh, know? Yeah. And the one thing about Ozzy, he hasn't changed as a player to a manager. Most guys become managers, a totally different player. How was that? person, not Ozzy again. It was weird at first because had, I played 11 years with the guy. But uh, he had his way of, like, calling me inside, you know, saying, well, I got to do this or I got to do that. Right. And uh, we, we kept it great. I, I really enjoyed playing for him. And he was motivating. And he knew when I needed a break. Uh, we, sure. we fought about that a little bit at first. <laughs> but Daisy wanted to get me off. But uh, it made a lot of sense in the long run. Copsey retired as Quentin moves to second. So now two away for Alexei Ramirez. As we take a look back. And... Frank Thomas's Hall of Fame career. 16 seasons with the White Sox. Two-time American League Most Valuable Player. Seems like yesterday. <laughs> oh, it was. It was. Well, it's funny now. We sit in the booth, crazy. I remember years ago, we were sitting out here talking it up at first base in between the Classic. I remember. We shared we shared uh, this city for, what, almost 13 A years? Long something like time. that. Now, during these Cubs-White Sox games, you guys ever leave messages for each other in the dirt around first base? Oh, this guy's a character. So um, <laughs> he always kept the game fun. That's why he had such a great career. You know, he kept the game fun. He's a hard player. And, boy, he got a lot of big hits against us. Castro across. And Ramirez is safe to throw Paul Daly off the bat. Well, Castro has to go to his left. Just kind of gets a little lazy with the throw. Drops down sidearm a little bit. And I think that might be a little inexperience also at first base for Xavier Nady. Most first basemen are going to try to keep their foot on the bag in this situation and stretch it out. It really didn't look to me like Nady had to come that far off the bag, Frank. You know, well, as a former first baseman, I think he could have stayed on the bag and, and, and just caught the ball. He probably the could have, but you know, this is a young shortstop. They brought this guy early this year. Right. He was 20 years old. Uh, he's got a bright future ahead of him. Uh, when you got D. Lee over there, 6'6", six, six every night, he's not used to the smaller Nady. That's true. Going hard all the way there is Ramirez avoiding the tag and, and doing a little umpiring as well. Good call there, Alexi. Ten straight wins. Everything seems to be going our way right now. <laughs> Maybe starting at first for only the fifth time this season. So first and third, two outs. One out to Ramon Castro in for a call strike now one and one. How do you enjoy the TV work, Frank? It's been fun. You know, it's, it's been very easy because, you know, we're doing what we always do, and that's talk baseball. Right. Um, there's a lot of talking to baseball in these clubhouses because there's a lot of hours spent, and I was definitely one of the guys that stayed in there a long time. Castro pops it into shallow right. Through Kadomi under it. Frank, thanks for stopping by. It's a pleasure, pleasure guys. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Good Frank you Thomas, guys. the big hurt, and we'll return to Chicago after these messages from your local Fox station.
third inning. Giovanni Soto leading off against Freddie Garcia. Soto batting 264. With eight home runs. He'll be followed by Terrio and then Fukudome. Cubs with one base runner over the first two innings. After getting shut out in yesterday's game on only three hits. Good breaking ball there. From Garcia. You may notice the number 20,000 on the right sleeve of Soto. Yeah, there's more people here than that. What, what's that all about? A couple more, right? Well, this is the 20,000th game in Cubs history. They are the first Major League franchise to reach the 20,000 mark, 20,000th regular season game in Cubs history. Soto down on strikes. First strikeout for Freddy Garcia. There's the Cubs all time record. 23 opponents no longer exist. There's been 1,873 players in franchise history. 46 Hall of Famers, 53 managers. And if you total up all the runs, over 12,000 miles. And Mark, you played in nearly 2,000 of the 20,000 games, 1,910 for That's the Chicago cool. Cubs. That's kind of cool. 20,000. You did not play in the first game, no. Mark, on April 25th. 1876 at Louisville. 4-0 Cubs win that day. <laughs> I just feel like I, I, I played that long I don't ago. think you were there. That's kind of a cool little thing. Put the patch on there and the sleeve. The good talking points. Next on the list, the Braves. At 19,965 in three cities. Boston, Milwaukee, and Atlanta. As Terrio strikes out. Two away here in the Cubs third. Time now, Mark, for our Mercedes-Benz trivia question. Before this season, before last night, it was the only other team to be no-hit twice in one season with one a perfect game. And, of course, the... Tampa Bay Rays were no hit last night by Edwin Jackson of the Arizona Diamondbacks, the team that you follow on a regular basis, right. although you were not there last night because you were here in Chicago. Exactly. Had to have been an interesting one. He walked eight, gave up no hits, and threw 149 pitches. So let's hope that it's not a, a no hitter last night and Tommy John surgery wow. here today. Eight walks, six strikeouts. Most pitches in a major league game in five years. They said he was still throwing 94 miles an hour in the ninth inning. I think the adrenaline was flowing. Luka Domi with a base hit up the middle. A two-out base runner for the Cubs. So the Tampa Bay Rays, who were no hit by Mark Burley, who pitched a perfect game against... Tampa Bay last July and then again earlier this season Dallas Braden with a Dallas perfect Brady. game against Tampa. Burley with the 18th perfect game in Major League history. There have been two and nearly a third this season. Already four no hitters. Probably should have been a fifth. Oh, Rutgers in seven. Question. 1990 and 91. Seven no hitters in Major League Baseball in each of those seasons. Well, the teeter totter is starting to go to the pitcher's side again in baseball. And I think that's direct correlation to, uh, to testing for performance enhancing drugs. And I think it's a good thing. Brock Thomas very outspoken towards the end of his career about those who were involved with performance enhancing drugs. When he retired, he said, I hit my 521 home runs the right way. And I hit my 174. <laughs> <laughs> but then good for Frank. You know, he was never mentioned. You never heard his name mentioned. You never heard Ken Griffey Jr.'s name mentioned. And that's a good thing. 
That's why Frank Thomas is one of the guys I really respect. And should be a first ballot Hall of Famer, no doubt. I don't think there's any question. Yes, he was a DH, but in my mind, he was one of the most he was one of the most dominating hitters. Put up Babe Ruth in numbers for about a six, seven year stretch. And for that, I think he's he should be enshrined in Cooperstown. In fact, you look at players who finished with a career average of 300 or better, 500 home runs, 1,500 RBIs, and 1,500 walks. Frank Thomas and Babe Ruth are two of the four who reached all of those milestones, along with Ted Williams and Mel Ott. 300 average, 500 home runs, 1,500 runs batted in, 1,500 walks. I think that's the case closed right there. I hope he invites me. <laughs> I'd like to go. But one of my old teammates is going in this year, Andre Dawson, the Hawk. Have you ever been to Cooperstown? I have. I have. I actually was there for Ryan Sandberg's induction a couple of years ago. You ever play in the Hall of Fame game? I did. Uh, early in my career in the, in the late 80s. I, I don't, do they even play that Hall of Fame game anymore? I don't think they do. Not in the same form. Right. But, yeah, you go to Cooperstown, you play an exhibition game against a chosen opponent in, in, the, in the oldest ballpark in the country. Just kind of something special about going where the game was invented. An old timers All Star game was held a couple of weeks ago at Cooperstown. Bob Feller took part in that game, among others. Did he really? He's st he's still out there throwing it. He he's in his 90s, correct? I think he's 91. Okay. Bedome takes his lead off first and a pitch out. Now two and two. One more note on the Tampa Bay Rays getting no hit for the second time this season. Only once in baseball history has a team been no hit twice in one season and made it to the playoffs. The 1917 White Sox. <laughs> so, the odds aren't with them, but they're having a great year. Two and a half games behind the Yankees in the American League East. Two two to Bird. Fouls it off to the right side. So Fukudome will return to first. No score. Cubs and White Sox. Two outs. Top of the third inning here in Chicago. On this day after the indefinite suspension of Cubs starter Carlos Zambrano. And oh, by the way, the White Sox won the game 6 0. Behind Jake Peavy's dominant start. There's a call, strike three. So Garcia strikes out the side in the third. We'll hear from Luke Pinella coming up.
Bottom of the third inning here in Chicago. With Gordon Beckham leading off for the White Sox against Carlos Silva. Beckham hit his second home run of the season in yesterday's game after going 211 at bats without a home run. And there's a base hit to the wall in right center. Beckham around second, on his way to third. The throw is not in time. A leadoff triple to lead off the bottom of the third inning for Beckham. Well, he gets a fastball in the middle of the plate and drives it into the gap. And once it gets into the gap, Beckham turns on the Jets. Good relay there from Fukudome. Terrio's throw just not in time to get Beckham, who was flying. Goodness gracious, this is fun to watch. I didn't have that extra gear, Kenny. No? I think you have it now, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. First triple this season for Beckham. He had one last year. Juan Pierre grabbed it out to the first baseman. Nady, his first time up. Speaking of Nady, remember the play back in the second inning when we had Frank Thomas in the right. booth when ball hit by Alexi Ramirez. And the throw from Castro pulled Lady off the bag. It was changed to an E6, an error on the shortstop Castro. And now Pierre pops out to the second baseman, Ryan Terrio. We spoke moments ago with Cub skipper Lou Panella coming off the Carlos Zambrano incident and a definite suspension yesterday. We asked Lou if he has spoken to Carlos sometime today. Well, I'll wait uh, to speak to him. I haven't spoken to him yet, but uh, look. What happened ye yesterday was very unfortunate, and uh, it shouldn't have happened. Uh, I was uh, sick about it all night. Let's talk about today's game, and the guy that's on the mound for you today, Carlos Silva, he's had a special season, hasn't he? Yeah, he really has, uh, Mark. He's really pitched well. And the amazing part about it is the last couple ball games, uh, uh, he, he's got beat. And actually, he's thrown the ball as well, or better than he was earlier in the year. So he's 8-2, and two, and he's certainly one of the... The pitchers here that should be considered uh, for an all-star game berth. And Lou, another Cub having an all-star type season is your center fielder, Marlon Burke. He's done well. He really has. Uh, he got him from Texas uh, over the winter, and uh, he's done a real nice job for us. Uh, he's got some energy, and he plays hard, and uh, he's been productive. Okay, thanks, Lou. Great to see you. Thanks. Good nice seeing both of you. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Lou Pella, our former colleague here at Fox. Line drive is caught by Castro. Off the bat of his scale, keeping Beckham at third. Oh, what a gorgeous play there by Castro. That was a bullet off the bat. Omar Vizquel just diving, sprawling to his left. And now, all of a sudden, Carlos Silva close to pitching around, which just looked like a certain one one nothing ball game here. He's not away from escaping this. Alex Rios, who struck out his first time up on a base hit into center field. Beckham scores easily. The White Sox take a 1 0 lead. RBI number 40 for Alex Rios. And when you've won 10 in a row, you get the big two out hits. Doesn't have to hit it hard, just bounces it up the box. Into center field it goes. He was one out away, but Alex Rios made sure it was a one nothing ball game, and Sox fans making big noise now. So Beckham with a leadoff triple. Silva then retired Pierre and Vizquel, but Rios with a two-out run scoring single. And now Paul Canerco, who lined out to Silva his first time up. The play before Mark, the skill, the 43 year old, lining out to the shortstop Castro. The skill made his major league debut in April of 89 before Starlin Castro was born. <laughs> Castro born in March of 90. That hurts. That hurts to hear. 
Well, he still looks like he's in his 20s. He's got a little hole in his haircut, <laughs> but, but he still looks like he's in his 20s. Still plays the game like he's 20. What a great player he's been. The oldest position player in Major League Baseball. Two pitchers are older than Omar. Jamie Moyer is 47. And Tim Wakefield, 43. Over 2,500 career starts at shortstop. Playing third base for the White Sox today. Two balls, one strike, bottom of the third inning, one run in. On two hits, the White Sox with a 1 0 lead. And just another workmanlike, terrific year out of their first baseman, Paul Canerco. Third in the American League in home runs, third in runs batted in. And terrific lifetime numbers against the Cubs. Change up from Silva, dives down and away. Over the top of it goes Pinerco. But boy, you make a mistake to Pinerco, he just consistently hits him in the seats. 337 times as a member of the White Sox. And this one to deep center. But Bird is right there. And the White Sox are retired, but not before they score a run on two hits and lead the Cubs 1 0 through three. Today's game is sponsored by Roundup Pump and Go Sprayer. Hard on weeds, easy on you. By Warner Brothers Pictures. Inception, the dream is real in theaters July 16th. And by One a Day Man's, the official multivitamin of Major League Baseball, specially formulated for men. Top of the fourth inning. With the White Sox leading the Cubs 1-0. Derek Lee leads things off against Freddie Garcia. Lee bounced out to the first baseman Canerco his first time up. Lee, Nady, and Ramirez for the Cubs here in the fourth. As we welcome in live from the White Sox dugout, tomorrow's scheduled starting pitcher, John Danks, a 13 game winner last year, 7 and 5 so far this season. John, thanks for joining us. Hey guys, appreciate you having me. Here's the 0 2 from Garcia to Lee, and for Freddie Garcia, strikeout number four, John Freddie. Has been tremendous. Your entire rotation during this 10 game winning streak has been. Talk about uh, what Freddie has been able to do so far today. I tell you what, he's been great. He's been our uh, stopper all year. And, uh, you know, he's he's uh, doing it again right now. He's, he's going out there and, uh, you know, shutting them down right now. So, so hopefully we can score a few more runs and, uh, and uh, Freddie can do the rest. John, it's been just a couple of weeks ago that you guys were nine and a half games behind the Minnesota Twins. 
Now you find yourself a game and a half. In your mind, what's been the biggest reason for this turnaround, this surge? Oh, I don't know. We're uh, we're hitting and uh, scoring runs. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. We're just playing, playing good baseball right now. Ten straight wins, 14 out of 15. We were talking to you between innings, and we hear some chuckling in the background as we take a look at the current standings. I'm sure you guys were a very loose bunch right now. What's going on down there? Oh, we're we're, we're winning some ball games. We're having fun. So, uh, what about right now in the dugout? What's oh, happening? I got Burley, AJ, Peavy, and everybody. Oh. <laughs> you made the mistake of, of wearing the microphone. Well, I know it. I know it. You know, Katsé is wearing a mic for you today as well. They're not aiming at Mark. Not yet. Man, I'm gonna need a shower after this. A human target. <laughs> Here's Aronis Ramirez with two outs. And Ramirez sends it into left. Juan Pierre makes the catch. John, can you stick with us in the next half inning? Only a seven pitch fourth for Freddie. Can you stay with us? All right. Tell PV I said he's just jealous. All right, I will. Welcome back to Fox Saturday Baseball presented by Chevrolet bottom of the fourth inning with the White Sox leading the Cubs one nothing and Carlos Quentin leading off for the White Sox. He was hit by a pitch back in the second inning. And Quentin sends this one into left field. Soriano makes the catch. John Dank still with us tomorrow's scheduled starter for the White Sox. And John Mark alluded to the fact that you guys were nine and a half out back in early June. General manager Kenny Williams said if this continues, changes are going to have to be made. Did you, did you guys get together as a team at any point and say, "Hey, we're better than this"? Well, we had we had numerous meetings, and uh, you know they uh, say winners win, losers have meetings. And um, fortunately, we've been playing good ball and and uh, did it before they uh, blew this team up. John Edwin Jackson with a no hitter last night. What do you make of the fact that there have already been four no hitters, two perfect games, and another? Uh, Oh, so close for the game from Galarraga. No, you know, I mean, it's it's, uh, it's a fun to watch, you know, especially being a pitcher, you really appreciate it. Um, you know, I don't know if I could have thrown 149 pitches, but wow, but, but it was impressive. What's the most pitches you've thrown in your career? I think I threw 118 this year in the Yankee Stadium, but uh, I can't imagine throwing another, you know, 30 pitches or so. 
Well, John, best of luck tomorrow against Ryan Dempster in the series finale. We appreciate you joining us. And I'm sorry if you've gotten in the way of just about anything that uh, <laughs> your teammates have been able to get their hands on in the White Sox dugout. Oh, no, it's all right, guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks, kid. Good luck. Thank you. All right, John Danks. 3-0 lifetime against the Cubs during his career. 13-game winner a year ago. And he will start tomorrow's game for the White Sox. Against right-hander Ryan Dempster, who pitched a complete game his last time out. Payoff pitch from Silva to Kase. And Kase went around. Second strikeout for Carlos Silva. Timeout for a direct TV game break. Take it away, Chris and Kevin. Shepard certainly not looking today like a guy who might retire following the season. Not at all. He is. Uh, he's got a flair for the dramatic, and it's it's been a rough go for him in the first half of this season. But he's a guy that, man, every time he steps into the batter's box, he's dangerous. And I, you know, people forget he won a batting title two years ago, Kenny. So if it goes, it went fast. Speaking of going fast, that was ripped past Ramos Ramirez. So Alexi Ramirez will. Pull into second base with a two out double. Third hit of the game for the White Sox. Fastball runs in. And he just pulls it right down the line. Good effort there by Aramis Ramirez. Now the Sox looking for another hit with two outs and a runner in scoring position. Here's Ramon Castro flying to right his first time up. Castro has become somewhat of a personal catcher for Freddy Garcia over the last month or so. Of course, he was behind the plate last July when Mark Burley pitched his perfect game. It was the first time they worked together. The first time in baseball history a perfect game was thrown with a battery that had never worked together before. Well, I would imagine he had to have caught him again the next time. Probably not, huh? You would think. No, oh, AJ Przinsky. <laughs> Something's going on down there. That's what happens when you win ten in a row. I think there might be a hot foot going on down there, Kenny. Castro is called out on strikes. Four innings in the books. One nothing Sox.
Welcome back to Fox Saturday Baseball, presented by Chevrolet. Getting out at Mark Race here in Chicago. White Sox with a run of the third. Lead the Cubs 1-0. Alfonso Soriano leading off against Freddy Garcia. And takes ball one. Soriano singled his first time up back in the second inning. And then went to second on an error. Charged to Juan Pierre. And bobbled the ball out left field. Cubs, as we mentioned, have been shut out three times in their last six games. Have not scored a run in 13 innings in this series. Soriano left field. Pierre on away. So Garcia has retired five in a row. Nationwide, thousands of communities have gotten involved as Chevrolet and Scotts have set out to rebuild local ballparks. Don't miss your chance to get involved and the winner is Chevrolet at Chevrolet Baseball. Dot com. With one away here, Starlin Castro grounded out to short his first time up. Falls off the first pitch, nothing and one. Well, for the Cubs, Mark, who have struggled to get base hits in key situations all season long. Twelfth in the league in hits, fourteenth in the league in runs. Batting just 249 with runners in scoring position. And another zero in the runs column so far tonight. That's when you're not hitting, it just makes you look bad as a team. And, you know, yeah, it's been a bad year for the Chicago Cubs. Certainly expectations a lot higher coming into this season. But oh boy, nine games under 500 certainly unexpected from just about everybody in baseball at this club. Slow roller, barehanded by Vizquel, no throw, an infield single for Starlin Castro. Just a perfect swinging bunt here by Castro. Even all the gold gloves in the world aren't going to get Castro the way he can fly down the line, so Vizquel has to stick it in his pocket. And the Cubs have speed at first base with one out. There's that combination again, the 20-year-old Castro, the 43-year-old right. Vizquel. Well, Castro on at first as Giovanni Soto steps in, struck out his first time up. Soto takes a called strike, nothing in one. Soto started the All-Star game. As a rookie back in 2008 at Yankee Stadium. For the second is in time. So Castro is thrown out, attempted to steal. Oh, what a great throw by Ramon Castro. That's a pretty good jump. And just a better throw by Ramon Castro just ahead of the slide that time. Just ahead. That's a good call out there by second base umpire Bruce Dreckman. The tag right there just before he got that hand in there. And Castro throws out Castro. Now two away. We got Castro's. We got Ramirez's. We got all kinds of shared names out there. Statistician Marty Aronoff letting us know that Ramon Castro did not start Mark Burley's first start. Oh, really? After the perfect game, it was A.J. Krasinski. As Alexei Ramirez throws out Giovanni Soto. Middle of the fifth, still 1 0 White Sox.
by Chevrolet and our award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Bottom of the fifth inning, Kenny Albert, Mark Grace. No runs, three hits, one error for the Cubs. One run, three hits, one error for the White Sox. As the number nine hitter, Gordon Beckham, leads off against Carlos Silva. Beckham with a leadoff triple. Back in the third inning, came around to score the game's only run. Driven home by Alex Rios. Pitching certainly raining here. Both guys just in complete command. As it did in the final game of the series at Wrigley a couple of weeks back. A near, a near no hitter again, Kenny. It was a little 0 2 bow tie. A double no hitter into the seventh in that game. Ted Lilly and Gavin Floyd. Juan Pierre breaking up Ted Lilly's no hitter in the ninth inning. That was the last time the White Sox lost a game. There's Ted. Theodore Roosevelt Lilly. Beckham into the left field corner. Just found. Let's take you back to Gordon Beckham's last at bat. Mark Kotze wearing the mic for us. Get three, Beck. Get three, kid. Great stuff from Mark Kotze. Two balls, two strikes. Well, Silva wanted that. He was none too pleased with the call from home plate umpire Bill Hahn. Pitch to Beckham. And he pops it into right center. Ukadome has it. One away. Time for a direct TV game break. Once again, Chris Rose and Kevin Millar. I think he's one of the best pitchers certainly in in the National League, but no, I don't think he should be on the All-Star team. I, I think you need to throw more than three or four starts to make the All-Star team. What do you think, Kenny? So you disagree with Eric Karras and I. We had this debate last week as Pierre lines are just foul. Four starts so far, 41 strikeouts, most ever in a pitcher's first four starts. Eric and I said last week if he continues this pace, we'll probably have made at least seven, maybe eight starts by the time the all-star rosters are chosen. I say why not if he continues this current pace. Okay, well, I mean, once again, the all-star game is an exhibition. I understand that. And, uh, and you know, fans cannot vote pitchers. Uh, they can only vote for position players. But I just think that there's probably somebody that is a deserving all-star that's been doing it all year long. That's that that if Steven Strasburg, now he's a San Diego State, State kid like I am. But I think this kid's going to make lots of all-star teams. It would probably be a teammate of his who is kept off the roster. Perhaps Ryan Zimmerman, which Strasburg has chosen, not necessarily a pitcher from another team. Right. And, and the other point that Eric and I brought up last week. Rosters have expanded in the all-star game this year to 34. Okay. And pitchers who pitch Sunday 
if they are named to the All-Star team, can still go. They can still go to Anaheim, take part in all the festivities, but they will be replaced on the roster. So if, gotcha. if three or four or maybe even five of the 14 pitchers chosen pitch Sunday, you're looking at a 38 or a 39-man roster. So in that case, I say if he continues Why this not? pace, send him to Anaheim. Well, I... I I don't. I don't disagree with you there. I you think can. That it's just that, and and absolutely, and we've we've not always agreed on things, but but I just think I think he is he is a lot of fun to watch. I know, I'm glued to the TV every time this kid pitches, and and I'm hoping that that he continues to excel because guys like him, pitchers like him, are great for the game, and it's great for the Washington Nationals. They haven't had a lot of good news the last few years. I think I think it's it's a great story. He's a great story, but. I just think uh, it, what would worry me would be maybe a guy that's been doing it all year right. long uh, being replaced by a guy that's, that's what, one and, two and one. He's two and one. Yeah, he's got a sparkling ERA, but he's got a two and one record. And he may start, what, four more games, three more games before the All-Star break. I don't know. I wish him well, but he's going to make lots of All-Star teams. He's been a great story. And, you know, as you mentioned, the All-Star game is really for the fans. And what fan would not want to see? Some of the top players in the American League, Joe Mowers, the Alex Rodriguez, is step in for it at that against Steven Strasburg. Well, sure. And I, I posed the question, Eric and I posed the question last week to Charlie Madwell, the National League okay. manager. He didn't give a definitive yes as far as whether or not he would consider Strasburg, but he didn't say no, and he was well aware of his stats. Well, I, and and when you, when you put it that way, like who wouldn't want to watch it? And yes, and, but... But if it comes at the sake of a yep. deserving all-star, then uh, then then I might have to I think see where twice about from. it. But boy, is he fun to watch pitch! And it's it's also led to uh, some fun debates over the last couple of weeks. Another foul off the bat of Juan Pierre. <laughs> Silver starting to get disgusted with the length of this at bat. I keep throwing him strikes. He keeps swatting them foul. So you and Eric Carroll agree on that. Isn't that scary that you agree with Eric Carroll? I think that's why they broke us up this week. <laughs> I worked with Eric the last five. Silva hits a second white sock. Hit Quentin with a pitch back in the second inning. And now Pierre hits the first. A breaking ball that just stays inside. Pierre doesn't really do much to get out of the way, but close enough, takes it off the arm. And He'll take a painful trip to first base. A 10 pitch at bat. White Sox with a one out base runner. Now a Verizon game summary. White Sox scoring their run of the third inning. And both pitchers have been terrific. A pair of eight game winners from Venezuela. Carlos Silva, Freddie Garcia. Of course, Ozzy Gain and Carlos Zambrano, who also fell on countrymen from Venezuela, right? The White Sox manager and the suspended Cubs starter. And they had dinner last night. A planned dinner. A planned dinner. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall for that one. Jordan foul down the right field line. Well, Jim Henry, the vice president and general manager of the Cubs, said after the game yesterday, Zambrano's conduct was not acceptable. We'll play with a 24-man roster before we tolerate that kind of behavior. Alfonso Soriano said everybody's just mad about the attitude. If he wants the attitude, take it inside, not in front of everybody. Well, in those days of where you could maybe do something in the dugout, there's just you're just seen by way too many people, and then. The information highway, super highway that we live on, live in now, it's going to be seen, and it's you know, it's an it's an embarrassing situation for Lou Pinella and the Chicago Cubs. And Lou Pinella told us before the game, another aspect is the domino effect. The Cubs right. bullpen forced to work seven innings in yesterday's game, 14 innings over the last two, so the Cubs had to send out a right-handed relief pitcher who they like in Jeff Stevens. In order to call up another right-hander, rookie Brian Schlitter, who is fresh in case he was needed right. for a number of innings today. Today, exactly. 
And he said it was heartbreaking to send Stevens out. He said because the kid doesn't deserve to be sent to, to the minor leagues. He deserves to be here. Yeah, so, that was one of the after effects of the Zambrano suspension and the fact that he only pitched one inning in yesterday's game. And then also after this series, they go back to National League rules. And if you're only a 24 man roster in the National League, that's you're coming up a man short. That will come into play eventually. A lot of double switching, a lot of pinch hitting and, and whatnot in the National League with that pitcher. Cubs will host the Pirates for three and then the Reds for four. This is the 14th of 15 consecutive games for the Cubs against the American League teams and for the White Sox the 14th of 15 in a row against the National League. And as we mentioned, the White Sox have now 14 and 2 going into league play, including the 10 consecutive wins. Cubs are 7 and 9 against the American League. One ball, two strike count. Pitch out. Pierre not going anywhere. This is just the, the kind of habit he creates, and that is Juan Pierre on first base. Pitch outs. Constantly picking off. Juan Pierre who leads the American League with 27 steals. You just give the, the pitcher something else to think about. There he goes. Throw from Soto. Looked like the throw was in time, but now the just tag was not. Yeah, and and that is a good call out there by second base umpire Bruce Dreckman. It, it's this is an easy call. Take a take a look. I mean, it wasn't even close. For some reason, Castro pulls his glove out of there instead of continuing the tag. And Bruce Dreckman's like, uh uh, what a great throw from Soto. And that's a youngster learning from a veteran right there. You know, Eric Karras and I did the game two weeks ago at Wrigley. And a similar play with Pierre attempting to steal second. And he was able to reach around the tag of the 20 year old Castro. And he went back to the well one more time. As Vizquel becomes strikeout victim number four of Carlos Silva down two away. Boy, it's just not even close. Juan Pierre far and away. I'll tell you what, Carl Crawford is a lot of fun to watch, isn't he? What a great base dealer. What a great player he is for the Tampa Bay Rays. Which uniform will he wear next season? Free well, agency looming. With free agency looming, you hope. Guys like him are able to find a way to stay with their team that they came up with, that they've had a lot of success with. That they've gone to the World Series with. It doesn't always work that way, but Rays fans and I think a lot of people hope that Carl Crawford can stay there. Alex Rios drove it. I mean, let's take another look at Juan Pierre. I mean, this is not even close. The tag's down, the hand comes out, and now Castro inexplicably just pulls his glove out of there and doesn't try to stay with the tag. Time now to answer our Mercedes Benz trivia question before the race this season. Only one at a time. Was a team no hit twice in a season with one of the no hitters a perfect game? And the answer, Mark? I do not know. Oh, the 65 man. Cubs. See, I wasn't on that team. <laughs> so. Ron Santo was. He'll join us in the booth during oh. the next half inning. That's awesome. Jim Maloney of the Reds no hit the Cubs on August 1965 and then 22 days later the Sandy Koufax perfect game. There's Ron. One of my favorite people in this world. 
coach of the Cubs and WGN for the last two decades as Rios rounds out a 31 pitch scoreless inning. We'll be visited by Ron Santo when we come back. Sponsored by Red Stripe Light. No matter what the score, keep it light with new Red Stripe Light Hooray Beer. By Verizon, the network with the most 3G coverage. And by Chevrolet and our award winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. Brian Terrio with a base hit into left center. For the Cubs here in the top of the sixth inning with the White Sox leading by the score of 1 0. Well, the first pitch of the top of the sixth inning just promptly gets smacked into left center field by Ryan Terrio. Cubs lost a base runner last inning. They tried to press the accelerator and they got caught still. Let's see what Lou Pinelli. He's got some options now turning over the top of the York. Kosuke Fukudome at the plate, one for two, single back in the third inning. As we are pleased to welcome into the booth a nine time All Star, five time Gold Glove Award winner. And one of the voices of the Cubs for the last two decades. The great Ron Santo, who 50 years ago today made his Cubs debut. Does it feel like 50 years, Ron? How are you doing, big boy? Uh, you know, it's been, uh, I, I can't believe it, but it's been 50 great years. You know, uh, being in uh, June 26th, uh, uh, and Pirates, uh, our friend Vernon Law, I was a nervous wreck. I had one year in the minor leagues. I was up. I was hitting six, the first pitch. Breaking ball buckled my knees, friend. And as uh, as I stepped back in, and as uh, it was Smokey Burgess threw the ball back, friend said, "That's the big league curveball, kid." I went, oh my God! How old were you? I was 20 years old. And uh, next pitch, I had a base hit up the middle. You got a base hit on your very first at bat. I had league. three hits in uh, a double hitter and five RBIs my opening day. Wow, it's hard hard to get much better after that. But I you know did. it, and we won a doubleheader. That was uh, the year that they won uh, the World Series, the Pirates. And that game, 50 years ago today, Ron was the 12,030th game in Cubs regular season history, and today, number 20,000. 20,000. 20, Can you believe that? Unbelievable. Here's the two-one to Fukudome with Terrio on the move. Garcia off the mound. That's the out at first. Terrio moves over to second. Ron, let's take you down memory lane. A Cub from 1960 through 1973. 300 
42 career home runs, member of the Cubs All-Century team. And then finished up with the White Sox in 1974, one of 165 players to play for both the Cubs and the White Sox. And the jersey retired back in September of 2003. How have you enjoyed these Cubs-White Sox interleague games through the years? Well, you know, uh, we used to play uh, as... Uh, Instead of the only league games, we used to play a game here for the Boys and Girls right. Club here in, uh, uh, well, Comiskey Park at the time. And then called the Cross Town Classic. Yeah, exactly. Right. And we only played five innings. But I'll I tell you one thing about the Sox and Cubs in interleague play. You're usually going to see a real good ball game. You don't see too many blowouts. It doesn't matter who's in first, who's in last. It's They play at another level. And uh, the fans, of course, this is all for the fans. But it means something now, Kenny. And, and <laughs> you know, they started uh, with us. They were, I think, nine games under 500, and they beat us two out of three. And from that moment on, they hadn't lost. Down in a row for the White Sox. Charging it is Vizquel. Low throw. Safe at first is Bird. Cubs have runners on the corner. What do you think about your ball club this year, Ron? I, I can't understand it. It's uh, been a very difficult year. Uh, we're, we've got good starting uh, pitching. Our bullpen's been a little shaky at the beginning, but we were not hitting. We got off to a bad start. And I've never seen a ball club that that's... Uh, really having problems with men on base can't come up with the big hit and it's been that way you know we we have not had an extra base hit uh i think in 24 innings something like that yeah that's it's unbelievable oh big opportunity here cubs haven't scored a run in 14 innings of this series with Derek Lee at the plate, big opportunity, first and third, one out. You know, Derek Lee's got a very bad back. He's playing, and you can see the way he's walking, Gracie, and uh, he's just not swinging the bat well, but he's a guy that will not get out of that lineup because we're, you know, we, we need his bat, but... There's a base hit into center field, and the Cubs tie the game at one. Well, even with a bad back. How about He looks just fine to me, Yes, right? <laughs> Finally. Well, Lou Pinella mentioned the back situation when we spoke with uh, Lou earlier today, Ron. He said the back, Derek's back really tightened up during that four-hour plane ride back from Seattle. Exactly. Uh, you know, four hours there, three and a half back. And uh, I could tell you that last, in, in uh, yesterday's ball game, he was not moving well at all. And... Uh, well, they were moving in the dugout pretty well, though, weren't they? Oh, gosh. It, that, that, that was uncalled for. I mean, I, you know, the problem there is, uh, to me, Zambrano, he, he finally pitched a real good ball game. And uh, we gave him 12 runs, but he pitched well. He looked like the Zambrano. You know, three years ago, he was very intimidating. Sure. Yes. And all of a sudden, he's lost that confidence. And that showed me last night, you know, first inning to get that upset. It's almost like I think he felt, you know, I'm going to lose this ball game. And so what he did yesterday is uncalled for, uncalled for. And he's done a lot of it. There's, there's been problems. No doubt about it. Zambrano now suspended indefinitely by the Cubs, who have tied the game at one. Two on. Only one out with Xavier Nady at the plate. Nady 0 for 2. On the ground for the shortstop. Ramirez to second for one. On to first. Double play. Ron, do you mind staying for another half inning? If you don't mind. Love to have you. Fine. Let's talk some Cubs baseball. Yes. What do you say? <laughs>
Cubs have tied it up 1-1. Bottom of the sixth inning here in Chicago. Kenny Albert, Mark Grace, and Ron Santo with us as Paul Canerco leads off for the White Sox. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning against Carlos Silva. Ron, how about the season that Silva's had coming it's, over from it's, Seattle? It's been unbelievable. And uh, what you're seeing today, I saw for the last 10 outings, he's 8 and 2, he could be 10 and 0. He's been unbelievable. Larry Rothschild really helped him in spring training. Got him to uh, uh, get that sinker working a little bit. It was a different angle. He's got him thrown at. He throws nothing but strikes. He uses the infield, the outfield. He doesn't try to strike anybody out. He, he doesn't walk them. He's only walked 14 going into today's game. And uh, he's he's been unreal, but we haven't. The last two games, I think we scored two runs for him and maybe one. Comes to 10 and 3 and Silva starts. Now 3 and 1 with Carlos Quentin waiting on deck. Cubs and White Sox tied at 1, bottom of the sixth inning. Cubs scoring their first run in 15 innings after they were shut out 6 0 yesterday. A very rare walk right there, Paul Canerco. So Canerco heads down to first. The All Star game coming up on Fox. In just a couple of weeks on July 13th from Anaheim. And Ron, you took part in nine All Star games. What's your biggest All Star memory? Well, my biggest uh, All Star memory was my first. I ended up uh, facing uh, Sam McDowell, the left hander, oh. when I was 23 oh. years old. And I ended up getting the base hit up the middle to win the ball game. But uh, really, what the All Star game was all about when I played, it was, you know, we went out there not just to have fun. We went out there to, to win. win a ball game. Yeah. No doubt about it's it. It's different now. Well, it has. Now it's changed. Now it means something. So you're not, you know, those these guys are going out, the American League and the National League, trying to win ball games. Win that ball game because you're going to get the home field advantage in the World Series. Yeah, and back in your day, a big pep talk, right, from the league president prior to the All-Star oh, game? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh-oh. All of a sudden, hit for the second time. Some wildness now from Carlos Silva. A walk, now a hit batsman. Third batter, Silva has hit today. Quentin twice, and Pierre. And Ron, our statistician, Marty Aronoff, taking us back to the 1966 All-Star Game in St. Louis. When he drove in a run of the fourth inning, National League would win the game 2-1-10. and 10. You batted fifth in that game behind Willie Mays, Roberto Clemente, Hank Aaron, and Willie McCovey. Yeah, that was uh, that was in St. Louis, and believe it or not, Kenny, that it was 130 degrees on that field. They had the astroturf. Oh, I remember uh, my those feet days. were burning. I played uh, I I played ten innings in that ball game, and there were fans watching that were taken out of the ballpark in about thirty wow. innings. It was so hot. Well, we got a visit from the trainer. I wonder if Carlos Silva may have done something. Remember, he's had tightness in that right hamstring, which is why his start was pushed back to today. Well, Lou Pinot's got enough on his mind, oh. enough troubles. The last thing you would need is the guy that's been his best starter oh, all absolutely. year long, all of a sudden maybe with an injury. But he seems to be okay. I think he's just trying to set up something with Aramis Ramirez and Castro on what to do in case of a bunt here. Yeah, which it looks like. Let's take a look what may have happened. There's the hit batsman, and all of a sudden, Silver Grail. Oh, yeah, kind of gimpy there with something. You had mentioned the hamstring case. Yes. He's had a hamstring bump. He had to leave the game. He hit only four batters over his first 13 starts. Three. So far today, so Katze at the plate. He's 0 for 2. Two on, nobody out. Here in the bottom of the sixth inning. What was it like, Ron, after 14 years on the north side, putting that White Sox uniform on for the first time? It was difficult, uh, but uh, the White Sox organization was great. You mean uh, they didn't sell those pizzas over here on the south side? <laughs> no, I kept those in Wrigley. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I got one story, quick story. Uh, I was having a bad day at third base, and some fans on third base side, all, and they were 12-inch round pizzas, and took it out of the box and flipped them at me like a 
Frisbee, <laughs> and three of them landed next to me, and I called a bat boy in, and I said, pick these up and reheat them. <laughs> <laughs> we can use a couple of them up here right now. <laughs> That was some good pizza, though. Well, you know, it was, uh, it was a lot of uh, work. I had uh, ovens in Wrigley Field. Here's the one-two from Silva. Missing low. Two balls, two strikes. Kotze unable to get a couple of bunts down. Now he's going to have to do it the old-fashioned way to try to move him up by swinging the bat. Jericho and Quentin, the base run. And Katze sends it to deep center field. Bird on the run, makes the catch. Jericho tags. So the White Sox now have runners on first and third with one out. They did move run, one of the runners up, and that was very good base running right there by Paul Canerco. He's not the fastest, swiftest guy in the game. But he really read that well. It's a deep enough fly ball for him to scamper back, tag up, and get to third base easily. You know, he's uh, he's quite a ball player. And, of course, you play I agree. golf with him. He's a great guy. However, and he's on his free agent here. Yeah. However, Carlos Quinton at first base still there, so the double play in order. And Silva does roll up a lot of ground balls. Alexei Ramirez at the plate. He has reached base twice tonight. Reached on an error and then doubled in the fourth. White Sox just one for nine with runners in scoring position in this game. I would imagine Pat Hughes doesn't know what to do with himself over there without you. <laughs> he does a great job. Uh, we've been together 15 years. Fine, that. fine radio voice in the Chicago uh, well, Pat Hughes. We kept you here for an extra half inning run. <laughs> That's all right. We might not let you go. Double barrel action out there in the Cub bullpen. Sean Marshall, Marshall Sean Marshall. Right field. To Kadome. Here comes Canarco. Quentin tagging as well. White Sox lead two to one. Sacrifice fly. RBI number 28. For Alexei Ramirez. Well, just good base running all the way around there by the White Sox. The previous play, Canerco tagging up, going to third base. Now, the deep enough fly ball off the bat of Alexei Ramirez. On the throw to the plate, Carlos Quentin tags up, gets himself into scoring position. It's easy to see, Kenny and Ron, why this team has won 10 games in a row. They're playing very crisp. They look at this inning without a base hit. A leadoff walk to Canerco, a hit batsman, heads up base running by Canerco, and then a sacrifice fly off the bat of Ramirez. If you ever want to drive your manager insane, after your team gets a gets a run in the top of the inning, come out and walk and hit a bat to, to put the first two guys on base. You know that'll just drive me crazy. There's the tag by Canerco. You see Carlos Quinton moving up as well. That's just good base running, good fundamentals there by these White Sox. Castro pops it up. So this will end the inning. The catch made by Soriano. Ron, this is well, fun Kenny. on the 50th anniversary of your Cubs debut. It's my Thank honor, pal. Nine-time All-Star Ron Santo will return to Chicago after these messages from your local Fox station.
Top of the seventh inning in Chicago. White Sox have regained the lead. It's now two to one. Kenny Albert along with Mark Grace. Both teams scoring a run in the sixth inning. As Ramos Ramirez leads off against Freddy Garcia. Who threw 77 pitches over the first six innings mark. That's 32 pitches fewer than Carlos Silva threw six. Well, he's working fast. He's throwing strikes. He's not only getting the Cubs out, but he's getting them out quickly. There is 0 for 2. Is flat out to left twice. Cubs shut out over the first 14 innings of this series. Scored their run in the sixth. RBI single off the bat of Derek Lee. Ramirez. Deep center. Rios going back on the track. Looks up. It is gone. Aramis Ramirez. One day after coming off the disabled list, ties the game at two. Oh, about 405 feet of long ball right there. He gets a change up, middle of the plate. And I'm not sure if, if Ramirez knew he got it, but it just sneaks out. And we got a brand new ball game again. His sixth home run of the season, his first hit since coming back. Went 0 for 3 yesterday, had been 0 for 2 today. So Aramis Ramirez takes Freddie Garcia deep. Now the count two and oh to Soriano. There you are, Mark. 13th on the Cubs all-time home run list. <laughs> and and falling. Speaking of home runs. And we've been talking about the all-star game throughout this telecast. Soriano. Part of a very exclusive club. As he rips a base hit into the left field corner. Soriano on his way to second. And he is in. Soriano marked the only player in history to hit an all-star home run representing three different ball clubs. I did not know that, but I know he just rips one past Omar Biscal at third base. And he's off to the races. Juan Pierre in left field doesn't have the best throwing line, so he's thinking two all the way. And he dives in just ahead of the throw. Another Pierre bobbled the ball hit by Soriano back in the second inning, allowing Soriano to take second base. Now the Cubs looking for their first lead of the afternoon or the evening. I'm sorry, it is evening. It's still, it's just still light up. He didn't have a lead yesterday either as Castro lays down the bunch. Soriano moves to third. So the Cubs are ready with a run in this inning. Now with the base runner, Soriano 90 feet away. The Cubs Toyota in-game box score. Soriano with a couple of hits. Derek Lee drove in a run of the sixth. Ramirez with a solo shot here in the seventh. Now it's the Cubs' turn to play good fundamental baseball. That was a perfect bunt there from Castro to move Soriano up. Ozzie Gian's going to play his infield in as Giovanni Soto now trying to give his side of town the lead. Soto 0 for 2, struck out and grounded to short. Strike one. Perfect fastball right on the outside corner at the knees. Nothing Soto's able to do with that one. Tony Pena. Looks like he's pretty much loose. But Ozzy Gian staying with Freddy Garcia. Garcia asking Castro for a new set of signs. Infield in, one out. Top of the seventh inning in a 2 2 game. Fastball way inside. One and one. Soriano doubled, sacrificed over to third by Castro. White Sox 
With a 10 game winning streak, 14 of their last 15. And one to Soto, low and away. Garcia has won his last five starts, eight and one, over his last nine. Shut out the Cubs over the first five, allowed a run in the sixth, the run here in the seventh. Soto fouls it off, two and two. tie any more than this. Somehow, some way, Soto was just frozen by this pitch. It looks like a change up that just right down the middle. And he just locked up, and that is a huge out for Freddie Garcia and the White Sox. And Ozzy again is on his way to the mound. Ozzy and Freddie Garcia, Mark, related. By marriage. He's staying with him. Freddy Garcia's wife is the niece of Ozzy's wife. Well, there's a lot of trust there, certainly. He's trusting. And I'm sure he's also asking, hey, Ryan Terrio got a base hit his last time up against you. Do you want to face him or maybe Fukudome, who's on deck? And I would imagine Freddy Garcia just told him, now I'll take my chances with the right hander. And here we go. And when you've won 10 in a row, even these tense moments are fun. Ball one to Terrio. Terrio single, came around to score the Cubs' first run back in the sixth inning. One and one. He's using that change up nicely now. Just about every pitch. You can see just the bottom drop out of it and right over the top of it goes Terrio. On one hop backhanded by Alexia Ramirez, fires across both throw. Scooped up by Canerco to end the inning, but. The Cubs tie the score at seventh inning stretch time in Chicago.
Just for Men hair color. Live forward. By Mobile One, the world's leading synthetic motor oil brand. And by Lowe's for all your home improvement needs. Lowe's, let's build something together. Cubs and White Sox tied at two, bottom of the seventh inning. 23-year-old right-hander Andrew Kastner out of the Cubs pen. And what he brings is gas. I mean, He's got only one earned run in ten and a third innings. A great arm. Facing it up and out, hitter Gordon Beckham. Terrio, the Navy, one away. And Carlos Silva. Another strong outing, those six innings, and placed here by Kastner. Making his ninth appearance. Silva, around two runs and only three hits. In six innings, yet another quality start. Yeah, he threw a good ball game for Lou Pinella. And really, the, the Cubs needed that today from, from Carlos Silva. And there's a lot of issues they're having to deal with right now, but one thing they never have to worry about, at least have it this year, they haven't, they haven't had to worry about that every fifth day that Carlos Silva pitches. Total will not be involved in the decision. Record of 8 and 2. Start of the year 8 and 0. Oh. First pitcher to begin his Cubs career 8 and 0 oh, since King Cole back in 1910. And no, I didn't play with him either. <laughs> the same King Cole mark who allowed Babe Ruth's first major league hit in 1914. Yeah, somebody had to give it up. It might as well have been King Cole. And it was. No first major league hit was off of. I'll tell you as soon as Juan Pierre is put away. Lou Canella and Carlos Silva, 109 pitches. A little different than the exchange between Lou and the Cubs starter yesterday. Sambrano after the first inning. About four runs. It has been reported widely that he was upset with a couple of his teammates for not diving after balls, in particular Derek Lee. Well, as Castor pitches a 1 2 3 7th. Jimmy Jones, by the way. First base one, yes. Jimmy Jones. A 7 pitch 7th for Castor.
Saturday Baseball presented by Chevrolet here in Chicago. Kenny Albert with Mark Grace. Cubs and White Sox tied at two as we move to the eighth inning. We have 33 year old right hander J.J. Putz on a relief of Freddie Garcia. Facing the top of the order, Kosuke Fukudemi fouls off the first pitch. Nothing in one. Putz has been tremendous. Leads the American League in strikeout to walk ratio. 15 consecutive scoreless innings. And during interleague play, 22 straight scoreless appearances. Now, what Ozzie Guillen has got is a bullpen full of terrific arms. I mean, even their mop up guys all have great stuff. One of the better bullpens in all of baseball. Puts just another hard thrower with great stuff, a lot of experience. Now, for the second consecutive day, the closer, Bobby Jenks, who was not needed yesterday, is unavailable due to a personal matter. Jenks with 17 saves, fourth in the American League. Fukudomi, Bird, and Lee for the Cubs here in the eighth in a 2 2 game. 2 1 from Puts. Out from the outside corner, now 2 and 2. Yeah, 97 miles an hour right to the outside corner. Yes, it's a strike, but it's an unhittable strike. Then they got a piece of it. His base hit back in the third inning, broken 0 for 13 string. One for three against Garcia today. Freddy Garcia allowing two runs on eight hits and in seven innings. No walks, five strikeouts. On the ground to the right side, Beckham. And one away. What a season for the Chicago Blackhawks, the Stanley Cup champions. Dustin Bufflin, one of their stars during the Stanley Cup run, is enjoying the game this afternoon, but he is now a former Chicago Blackhawk. Blackhawks clearing salary cap space. Bufflin now a member mark of the Atlanta Thrashers. Well, what a postseason he had. Terrific young power forward. Stanley Cup visited Ridley Field two Sundays ago. The entire White Sox team, the entire Cubs team, and all of the Blackhawks run hand. They took a nice group photo prior to that Sunday night game. Stanley Cup also joined Eric Carros, Chris Rose, and I at dinner two nights earlier. You know what? You're going to brag about that all, this whole time because I, I still haven't seen it. I could show you a picture. <laughs> oh, I'll bet you could. <laughs> Uh, being the being the amazing hockey fan and broadcast that you are, that had to have been a fun night. What a weekend that was here in Chicago. The Blackhawks parade on Friday, Cubs, White Sox, and then the Stanley Cup at Wrigley on Sunday. What was it like for you with the New York Yankees back in town in Phoenix this past week? Bring back members, I'm sure, of the 2001 World Series. Yeah, they uh, we, we brought all us old guys out for for a little uh, trip down memory lane, to, to say the least. Gonzo, Matt Williams, myself. I think we threw out a first pitch, and you know, there's still some. We had phone interviews during the game with uh, you know, guys like Tony Womack and Steve Finley. And championships are not easy to win. Of course, your manager that year, Bob Bradley, now one right. of the TV voices of the Cubs. That's exactly right. And the Yankees playing on Fox today in Los Angeles. Joe Buck and Tim McCarter joined in the booth by Reggie Jackson and Tommy Lasorda. That we had Frank fun. Thomas and Ron Santo here in Chicago. And the other Fox gang, the Giants and Red Sox, Dick Stockton and Eric Carros visited by Willie McCovey and Juan Marichal. Awesome. What a night on Fox. 
Up the middle, charging is Alexei Ramirez. And he makes the play to retire Marlon Byrd. Terrific play by the White Sox shortstop, two away. Well, just a gorgeous play by Alexi Ramirez. The way Bird runs, you think this is a base hit. He gets the short hop, quickly gets rid of him, really easily gets Bird. I thought this was going to be a base hit once it got past puts. But man, what a gorgeous play by Ramirez. So with two away, here's Derek Lee. Drove in the Cubs' first run back in the sixth inning. Ball high from puts. Ball one. The Cubs designated hitters mark during interleague play. Are now four for 33 with no extra base hits. Wow. Although Lee does have the RBI single in this game. Ramos Ramirez with a solo home run in the seventh. Accounting for the two Cubs runs. White Sox scored their runs in the third and the sixth. Well, not many National League teams, when they pick their teams to leave spring training, have a spot on the roster for a guy that's going to be a quote unquote DH. Usually, DHs for National League teams are like the extra infielder, the fourth outfielder, whoever it may be. Cubs have used six different designated hitters during their 17 to league games. Nady, Lee, Ramirez, Soto, Bird, and Soriano. Breaking ball just gets a piece of the outside corner, according to Bill Hunt. Two one fouled off to the right side. Well, here are this year's people all stars among us for the Cubs and White Sox: Sharon Mason and Kenny Fullman. The names of all 30 winners will be honored during the All-Star pregame ceremony on Fox will be announced on Monday at PeopleAllStars.com. So congratulations to Sharon and Kenny. Sox fans now wanting that big strikeout from Puts. You and I are going to be in Anaheim working yes, with 3D we telecast. Looking for, forward to that. For Fox and Direct TV. Looking very much forward to working that with you, Kenny. That's Can't wait to fun. see what you look like in 3D. And uh, and we'll go down and we'll inter we'll interview Steven Strasburg. You got it. Okay. What do you say? A couple of San Diego State guys. July 13th. As we celebrate the People Everyday All Stars. Part of the All Star game on Fox. JJ puts just missing with a fastball on two and two. It's clearly outside. Power on power. 97 mile an hour fastballs. And Derek Lee, who can hit him an awfully long way when they're mistakes. Puts from Puts on the ground to the shortstop from your edge. Middle of the eighth in Chicago. We remain tied with the heart of the White Sox order to uh, Rios, Caracho, and then Quinn.
crew. And by Direct TV, watch and record in multiple rooms with just one DVR. Cubs and White Sox tied at two, bottom of the eighth inning. Andrew Kashner tied the White Sox in order in the seventh as the Steven Strasburg to the All Star game debate continues. I have learned via Twitter, Mark, uh -huh. what Tim McCarver said on today's Dodger Yankee telecast on Fox. Quote, it would be an injustice not to showcase him on the game's biggest stage in July. Okay. So the debate shall go on. One well, man's opinion, well, of course. What if what if he goes out and has a couple of bad starts? Then he shouldn't be there. Exactly. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I'm only saying if he continues to do over his next three starts what we have seen so right. far over his right. first four. Okay. And again, with the expanded rosters, theoretically there could be a 38 or a 39 man right. roster in the National League, depending on how many All Star pitchers pitch on the Sunday prior to the All Star game, July 11th. Rios runs out to Terrio, so all four outs recorded by Cashtamark have been ground balls to the second baseman. Well, Tim McCart has been tweeting. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and MySpace. Get exclusive photos and behind the scenes looks of pregame and game preparations for tonight's Yankees Dodgers game. Being updated right now, log on to Facebook.com slash Fox Sports, Twitter.com slash MLB on Fox, or MySpace.com slash Fox Sports. Talking to some of these White Sox before the game. They got to face Steven Strasburg earlier. And they were telling me, you know, Tracy, he's got a, he's got this great fast one, he's got this great curveball, but they were most impressed with Steven Strasburg's changeup. That was the amazing thing about it. Was probably his third best pitch, and yet most of the White Sox were talking about it. Like what a great pitch it is. Goodness. Alex Strasburg, Kastner off to a terrific start in the majors. Was allowed only one earned run over his first nine appearances. One, one to Pinerco. Now one and two. He just reared back and threw it by a very good fastball hitter in Paul Pinerco. 98. I mean, gun. here it is. What's my name? Goodness. Matt Thornton, left hander up in the White Sox pen. Another hard thrower. Pinerco on the drive. Deep left field. No doubt about it. White Sox take a 3 to 2 lead. Veteran hitter setting up a youngster. You throw a fastball right by me and I swing and miss. Well, I'm going to be a little quicker on the next one. He was a little quicker and he hit that one nearly to the light towers. This place is going crazy. 19th of the year for Conco. And the first home run allowed by Kashner in the major leagues. And it wasn't a cheapie. Well, Canerco Mark his 15th home run against the Cubs. The record for most home runs during interleague play against a single opponent. Barry Bonds, 18 against Oakland. Canerco against the Cubs next on the list. Yeah, that's some big time names he's in there with. Goodness. He's also. In the top five during interleague play. It's his 14th home run at home this season, most of the majors. Number 345 in his career. And the White Sox with their third one run lead of this game. But remember, their closer, Bobby Jenks, is unavailable. He's unavailable. It is still Matt Thornton out there warming up in the bullpen as Paul Canerco. You always want to tell the stories about the home run. Yeah. Fastball right there. 
Oh boy, he set up this youngster in the throwing that next fastball. Cubs will have the middle of the order go up. Nady, Ramirez, and Soriano in the top of the ninth. We saw number 51, the newest Cub, Brian Schlitter, called up today. Grew up in Park Ridge, Illinois. Well, he reached triple digits on wow. that fastball. I think you called that one an angry fastball, Ooh. Kenny. Ball pitch to Quentin. Castro, two out. Here's the home run. Yeah, Paulie knew it. Just a quick, strong swing. About 10 rows deep, no doubt about it. That bat just made a sound, didn't it, Kenny? My bats didn't sound like that. Never? On a hundred feet, on a rare occasion. Off the bat of Paul Canarco, giving the White Sox a three to two lead as they look to win their 11th in a row. Texas Rangers' 11 game win streak came to an end yesterday. It's the White Sox' 14th double digit win streak in franchise history. Their longest ever, a 19 game streak back in August of 1906. Prior to this streak mark, their longest win streak this season, four games. Really? Oh, it's just a crazy game, this game we, we love. We love this game so much, but well, also it can be such a heartbreaking game. Ozzie Guillen looking for answers all year. He's getting them now. Is that Katze's bat? Splinters, he'll have to get another one. The Toyota in-game box score for the White Sox. A run of the third, a run of the sixth, but the big blow, Paul Canarco. Solo shot off Andrew Kastner here in the eighth. Canarco also heads up base running. Scored the White Sox second run in the sixth. Oh, look at the head just stay right on the baseball. The eyes right there. His nose behind his belly button and just driving through the baseball. Swinging through it, not to it. I like that. All you youngsters out there, swing through. Don't swing to the baseball. Swing through the baseball. Katze stays alive. White Sox were nine and a half out following their game on June 9th. They've won 14 of 15. Their only loss, 1 0 at Sunday night at Wrigley when they were one hit by Ted Lilly. Katze down on strikes, but the White Sox take the lead on the Canerco home run, his 19th of the season. We head to the ninth as the White Sox. By a run.
hard throwing left-hander Matt Thornton will try and close things out for the White Sox here in the ninth. Nothing in one to Xavier Nady. With the closer Bobby Jenks unavailable due to a family matter. Just another great arm this time from the left side coming out of the Sox bullpen. He's going to have to face three dangerous right-handed hitters. Nady, Ramirez, Soriano. One and two on Nady, who is 0 for 3 today, has not hit the ball out of the infield. Well, he had a pitch to hit right there, Kenny. He had a fastball right down the middle. He made a good pass at it, but he came up empty. Thornton with two saves this season. Paul Canarco, solo home run, bottom of the eighth inning. Give the White Sox their third one run lead of this game. Great job by our entire crew here today in Chicago, led by our producer, Caroline Lee McDermott, our director, Ray Tipton, associate director, Eric Billigmeyer, broadcast associate, Matt Saldana, technical producer, Craig Marlowe, technical director is Dan Berger, pregame show produced by Don Bowie, the highlights coordinator, Janice Casaza, and the technical supervisor is Jack Simmons. Thornton missing away with the fastball. The count is now full with Aramis Ramirez waiting on deck. Ramirez hit a seventh inning home run. The tie of the game at two. They all pitch from Thornton. And he fouls it off to the right side. Been an entertaining ball game today here, Kenny. Don't tell him it's entertaining. He's down the run. After a tough day yesterday. Well, what would have been ball four? Maybe tried to check his swing, and he did check his swing. But however, the ball still found the bat. So instead of ball four, he'll have to try it again. Ninth pitch of this at bat to Nady, and it's on the ground to the shortstop. Ramirez waiting. He throws, and Nady is retired. Seven consecutive Cubs have been retired by Garcia, Puts, and Thornton. One away here in the top of the ninth. With the All-Star Game on Fox Tuesday, July 13th from Anaheim. All-Star squads will be managed by Marty and Charlie Manuel. Here's a two-time All-Star, Aramis Ramirez, and he takes... Strike one from Thornton. Ramirez 0 for 1 lifetime against Thornton. A solo homer off Garcia. His last time up back in the seventh. Nothing in two. The Cubs. Nine games under the 500 mark at 32 and 41. They have not been 10 games under 500 all season. Ryan Dempster and John Danks, the pitching matchup tomorrow. The 0 2 from Thornton to Ramirez fouls it off. 99 miles an hour. Boy, between Kastner and Thornton. We've seen oh. some hard throws. Puts. White Sox two outs away from their 11th consecutive victory. Not one fan has left this ballpark. Our thanks to Frank Thomas, Ron Santo, Luke Absolutely. Nello, John that was Danks, who all joined us during the telecast today. As Mark has felt more like a, a talk show host than a color <laughs> analyst. <laughs> well, it's, it's tough to get anything out of Ron Santo. Yes. Yeah. Such a quiet, <laughs> quiet guy. Pitch to Ramirez. Long run for three White Sox. And it drops foul. Back to back long at bats here. Nine pitches before he retired X and 80. Now 
Ramirez and Thornton battling again. Check local listings for the game and time in your area next week on Fox, including the Mets and the Nationals. There's former National Alfonso Soriano looming on deck. Ball 4 2 Ramirez. So the potential tying run is now on at first base for the Cubs. Very good at that there by Ramos Ramirez. He battled and battled those 99 mile an hour fastballs. He's the tying run and the ever dangerous Alfonso Soriano. Now going to take his chances with Thornton. That was the first walk issued by a White Sox pitcher in this game. Soriano one for four lifetime against Thornton. Jeff Baker on deck. We got a pinch runner now for Aramis Ramirez. Tyler Colvin. So Colvin running for Ramirez. A little more speed out there now. Baker out on deck. I want to Soriano foul back to the screen. Trying to get him to chase up around the letters. Nothing doing from Soriano. Or just no nonsense baseball from Matt Thornton. Fastball after fastball. No fear at all in this left hand. There's an off speed pitch, the first one. That was a slider. Soriano took a pretty good pass at it. That one stayed a little more in the middle of the plate than Thornton wanted, and now he's getting a visit from his catcher saying, ah, you know, you're throwing 99 miles an hour. I'm not so sure if we want to just hang those sliders right here because those are a lot easier to hit. One ball, two strike count. White Sox have had five winning streaks in club history of at least 11 games. The last time back in 1961, a 12-game streak. In June of 61. And one, two, another foul. We went right in on the belly button of Soriano. Soriano just able to fight that one off and stay alive. Great pitch. This will be pitch number 23 this inning. By Matt Thornton. Did not go around, says first base umpire Gary Darling. Now two and two. Holding the runner on first. One out. White Sox with a one run lead at the top of the ninth inning. Two two from Thornton. On the ground to the third baseman. Viscal to second for one to first. Double play. 5-4-3 and the White Sox win their 11th consecutive game. For the White Sox, their longest winning streak since 1961. Chris Rose and Kevin Millar from our Los Angeles studios right after these messages. And a word from our local Fox station, 3-2 to two Sox.